Hey guys, I just got the uh, wild speaker uh, tacked in, just sitting here in a uh, plastic container, little close proximity transmitter. And just a few still photos for my reference. When I uh, put this thing back together, you can see me breaking it apart. The old uh, crusty output transformer, I'll clean that up. The uh, terminal strip on the bottom, that center position was broke. So I'll place a, a new terminal strip on there. You can see the wires are frayed as well coming from the humbucking coil. And one of the four fasteners that hold the yoke back to the uh, speaker basket itself. Looks like I can just remove those. And uh, of course the yoke with the uh, fill coil, humbucking coil, will release itself from the basket. And then I can clean the basket up. Again, just one of the fasteners. And with the four fasteners loose, you can see it simply uh, does lift off. Access to uh, everything there. We'll set that off to the side. And you can see the speaker builder uh, keyed that bottom plate in two different locations for alignment purposes of the uh, plate itself back to the yoke to keep the uh, center pole piece in the middle and with the yoke removed you can see the uh, kind of crusty speaker basket i've got those little ears holding the uh, output transformer on and a better look at that terminal strip that i'll replace that's broke there just so we can tie down the uh, leads to the uh, output transformer humbucking coil and, of course, the uh, voice coil. I'll take a look at the turns ratio of the output transformer in just a moment. One more look at the basket. Again, I'm going to remove the uh, what's left of the surround and the gasket. You know, I don't expect there to be a problem with the output transformer as far as the turns ratio and the reflected impedance back to the output tube. But let's just verify that little circuit that I built some time back. We're about 21.6 to 1 as far as the uh, turns ratio. And again, assuming a 4 ohm loudspeaker, uh, 1870 or so reflected impedance off of this particular uh, transformer. Simple circuit to build. If you're interested, I'll put a link in the description. Again, just the primary connection, secondary connection. And again, I've got the reflected impedance down to the very bottom based on a four ohm loudspeaker. That's just part of the code. Again, just under 22 turns to one as far as the turns ratio. And the tube itself is happy around 2000, so we're fine there. After sitting the uh, basket down in some lacquer thinner, letting that dissolve the uh, glue, holding the uh, surround and the gasket on. A couple misty coats of uh, Krylon, again, metallic aluminum. Just on this side, I'll wait about an hour or so, flip this over and uh, hit the other side. Let that uh, cure for about 24 hours or longer. One hour passed, so uh, back outside, flip this over and uh, hit the other side with the uh, paint. A few pieces of uh, lint I noticed down in the uh, screw fasteners, but uh, no big deal. The cone will cover that up. I got the speaker basket uh, cleaned up, painted, and I'm ready to reassemble everything. This is keyed in two different places. I was able to take my uh, chisel right here and uh, just break it loose. Allows access to the uh, fill coil. I'll take that out, clean up the uh, center pole piece, double check the uh, fill coil DC resistance as well and uh, redress this lead right here. Humbucking coil, just a little different design on this particular one. You'll see lots of them are just wound flat in a uh, clockwise or counterclockwise motion. 
This one actually has a separate bobbin and is wound around the uh, center pole piece and sits inside the uh, fill coil. End result, of course, is the same. We are out of phase with the uh, voice coil and it reduces hum to a certain degree. It's taking a scotch right pad and also cleaning up the uh, center pole piece that gets magnetized. I'm just making sure I don't have any uh, burrs and then I'm going to put just a little bit of wax on here as well. Renaissance. That will act as a uh, rust inhibitor as well. All right, that cleaned up nice. Same for the back plate as well. Just cleaning it up real well. Just to make sure there's uh, no burrs or anything that would uh, create any rubbing of the voice coil. Everything cleaned up. I'm going to go ahead and just press the uh, two pieces back together in the vise. And probably put some shims down in here as well around the uh, center pole piece just to ensure everything stays uh, in the center as much as possible. Well, that looks a little bit better. Got everything uh, pressed back in place and it looks like the alignment is uh, spot on now. Everything's back together. All the uh, fasteners cleaned up and torqued down. Center pole piece uh, aligned in the center. Instead of being skewed to one side, air gap is uh, cleaned out as well. The uh, basket uh, repainted. I've got to do some work on the output transformer just to clean it up a bit. And you can see where that uh, terminal strip this broke loose there in that center position. Get that remounted. And then go ahead and proceed with uh, building a, a new cone. I've already uh, cut a uh, surround. I've got to get the uh, correct size here and get that uh, glued in place. Do some trimming on it as well. Still uh, brainstorming on the uh, spider. I'll probably use some of the modern spider and part of the old spider and uh, try to piece the two together. Doing a dry fit of the surround and again I was able to save maybe a half of the gasket. Again the uh, Surround itself is cut back just a bit, still to fit on the edge of the basket, but allow the existing old uh, OEM gasket cardboard to uh, fit around the uh, foam without compressing it. So I think it's going to work. So as I mentioned earlier, the surround uh, cut back just a bit. Tighten up the circle. I've got about the same amount of distance that you see here exposed on the other side, allowing that old uh, cardboard gasket to uh, work without compressing or compromising the uh, foam surround. Still pondering things, but I think I'm going to try to use this terminal strip. Uh, drill this out. Remove it. That should attach here. Leave me three connections in the middle, and I drill out these two on the end. Might be able to make that work. So I think that's going to work out. Again, I'm going to get a piece of fish paper and uh, cut it to go over the uh, terminal strips here. After I uh, clean up the uh, transformer best I can, it's a uh, rusty made. All right, that looks a little more presentable. Okay, I think I'm going to use uh, both spiders. I've already cut the uh, diameter of the outside of the spider to uh, fit the ring. I'll glue that down, and then you see I have a red mark there. That's going to be my uh, cut mark, and then I'll have a little bit of overlap here for the old spider. 
I'm going to try that because I'm going to still maintain some of the uh, flexibility. Again, the modern day spider is so rigid. I'm afraid the uh, voice coil is not going to really act as a piston and move up and down as it should. So um, it'll be uh, two spiders to make one. And you can see I have very little voice coil to uh, work with as far as attaching the uh, comb. So uh, that'll be a little tricky. Just getting the uh, height and everything uh, correct to attach back to the uh, surround. Probably somewhere between 15 to 18 millimeters in height. Just cut the uh, inside piece out that I needed. And again, I think that will support the existing spider so another uh, dry fit i'll go ahead and get the new spider in place and get that tacked down because i can move the other existing spider around when i do the alignment and uh, put some shims in here around the uh, center pole piece Just a real small bead, doesn't take much. Just going around the perimeter just to make sure that uh, it adheres well. All right, let that dry for a bit. Then I'll come back and uh, put the old spider over the top of this spider, place the uh, shims around the uh, center pole piece, and then get started fabricating a uh, comb. Just doing some more dry fits with my uh, comb replacement. I mentioned I don't have much uh, voice coil to work with. So uh, it's going to be a little tedious around that area. But uh, I think I'm getting there height wise and all that. Just placing some Aileen's white glue around the parameter where I'll attach the uh, homemade comb. Just a little bit of weight. Let that sit there on the uh, back side and uh, dry for a bit. I'm going to have to extend the uh, voice coil leads uh, just a bit. Probably hard to see, but I made some shims up with some uh, four mil plastic. I'll remove those now and set them off to the side and uh, go ahead and put my uh, speaker glue down here, spider glue, and attach the existing spider to my uh, donor and place the shims in. You can see my uh, pencil mark probably right in there. So just in this area, a uh, bead of glue. With the shims in place, I'm going to just go back and apply some pressure around the uh, plastic spider in the area that I placed the epoxy down. Okay, I think I'm going to go ahead and apply another bead on the outside as well, where the two spiders meet. Another dry fit, this is like number four, number five. Again, I don't have much of a voice coil protruding. And I've got these uh, leads off of the uh, voice coil itself. I'm going to go ahead and make up some epoxy and give it a good old try. See what happens here. Okay, guys, that's it for today. I'll let this set up overnight. I'll come back and uh, give it a test after I validate the uh, humbucking coil orientation to make sure I've got that correct. Um, I used a, a white glue around the uh, surround back to the basket. Uh, the reason why I'm not 100% confident that I had enough voice coil to work with to get the uh, cone attached. So uh, again, time will tell on that. I think that will work for this old vintage loudspeaker. It's the next day. I just want to make sure all the uh, glue adhesive set up uh, correctly. 
Again, a basic test, just using my uh, signal generator, only energizing the field coil with a nine volt battery. Just made certain that the humbucking coil was uh, correct, and it was the way it was wired. So let me get this thing back in the receiver, or at least uh, use some jumpers, tack it in on a temporary basis, and uh, let's see how the thing sounds. Thanks for watching and listening, folks. Uh, more to come soon.